All right, you guys, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. So we had a couple figs to review today. I wanna to make sure I get these in and document them in video um, before it's kind of too late in the season. We're getting really cold out. Also, I don't know how much longer the fruits really are gonna be of a high quality. Uh, we're getting a lot of fruit flies. We're getting, you know, lots of ants. The, the temperatures are just consistently so much colder now. Um, but we have in front of me, I think, should be a pretty darn good fig, especially for this time of the year. We're officially in October now. It's the beginning of October. Um, and considering all these conditions, all these negative things that are kind of, you know, shortening our fig season here, kind of abruptly getting it to an end, we do have some quality fruits. And I want to make sure, like I said, I get these documented for you guys. Um, this variety here is called Aishia Black uh, from the USDA. The true origin of this fruit is kind of unknown. People say it's from the island of Askia, right? That's how you would typically pronounce it. And um, there's other varieties like green Askia and white Askia, as well as this black Askia that, uh, you know, just, I guess for whatever reason, have attained that name and if you were to go to that island or that location and look for these particular fruits, I don't know if you'd really find them. So I don't know where these names come from. A lot of the USDA figs, the true origin of them, in my mind, is so really just unknown to me. They're supposed to document this and have this stuff, you know, somewhere at least of where this all came from and whatnot. But, you know, this at least, I believe this particular fig is at the very least, I believe, described in Condit's monograph. Um, so, you know, it does have some history to it. It's not like this, this fig just magically appeared out of nowhere. Um, although, is this, you know, really and truly the fig that was described in Condit's monograph? I mean, there's so many questions, right? And typically with the origin of these fruits, I don't put a lot of stock into it for that reason. So, however, having said that, this fig has become really quite... Um, popular in the fig community. It's really become uh, quite a difficult fig to grow as well because in the USDA's collection, a lot of the figs there ended up getting fig mosaic virus, or at least that virus was so intense uh, to an intense enough degree that certain varieties were affected more heavily than others. And this one certainly has been affected quite heavily by fig mosaic virus to the point where it's such a great tasting fig and everybody really sort of agreed with that and knew that for many years, but it was so hard to propagate. It was so hard to get it from the USDA into the hands of collectors uh, and in the hands of many collectors. So this has been a, really a challenge for the most part to get this particular fig um, established for so many growers because of that virus. And typically the virus is not really a big deal it's in almost all the varieties here. You would see it in some, some terms, but this variety just really has struggled over the years more than any of the other varieties with this particular virus. And um, you can really see it on my trees. I have a number of them grafted. I have um, maybe one in a pot that's on its own roots somewhere, but uh, I also have one in the ground and you know, now that we've kind of been making them more healthy over time, and as our trees become more healthy, the more figs that they will set. So as you can kind of see here on this tree, and I've talked about this particular tree in the video that we did on rejuvenation pruning, is that the tree in the beginning of its process of waking up had a lot of that fig mosaic virus. And these leaves down here, this growth was just not very healthy. And therefore the figs just the fruit buds never set along these nodes. But as you go up higher on the branches, the fruit buds are present and the fruits obviously are present as well at this point of the season. You can see the fruit buds right there as well, the double dots that, that are present on the branches. But for whatever reason, the fruits never had formed. This is a bit difficult to uh, get the camera to focus, unfortunately. 
there it is. So the, you can see the double dots and you can see the, the fruit buds present, but for whatever reason, they just never formed. So this variety for many reasons is just not a very productive fig, but actually really it's because of the virus. It's not really for many reasons. It's, it's really just simply and truly, but as the tree gets healthy and you can see the, the leaves now are showing almost no symptoms of the virus, you can see that it will become at some point roughly a somewhat productive variety. Um, and you know, that's really the point that I wanna make about this is that the virus is not permanent. I mean, it can be there in some expression for forever, I guess, but doing, you know, rejuvenation pruning that I've mentioned so many in so many other videos by just simply cutting the tree back repeatedly and planting the tree I have there in the ground and cutting that back every year, you could see the growth has just become so, so healthy. And that's kind of how this particular variety finally made its way around to different growers in the fig community, is that a grower named Herman Two actually, that lives only 20 minutes from me in Jersey, right across the Delaware, uh, he had this variety for many years and over the years of cu continually cutting it back, or I think he said one year, it died to the ground because of the cold. So whether you, you kill it by the cold or whether or not you chop it back yourself by your own means, you're essentially rejuvenating the tree. It'll send up a new sucker, new growth from lower down on the branches or a sucker from the roots that typically is a lot healthier and shows a lot less of that expression of the virus. And really it was from his tree that many of the people uh, today actually grow their Aishia black from. So even though people think about this as from Aishia black from the USDA, a lot of people's trees come from someone named Herman too. And it may have the, the tag actually VS, Aishia black VS, which is his initials of Herman too. So, it's really incredible and um, I've been kind of doing this myself with, with this particular variety is kind of replicating what he has done with his in-ground tree um, and doing that with, to my own to kind of make my own tree equally or even more healthy potentially than his. Can anyone spot it out by the way? Because pretty much everything over here is extremely healthy. I mean, there's very little leaves, very few leaves over here that are showing really any <laughs> symptoms of the virus. This uh, particular tree is right here, actually. So this is a different variety that is called Ungiarolo. I'm just gonna stake this kind of out of the, out of the way. But back here is a whole branch that's completely healthy. Very, very few signs of the virus, even down here at the base, and then also here on this particular branch. So there's two branches of this uh, variety. It's still a young tree. It's still, still getting established. It's still getting healthier, but we now actually have an air layer down here on the bottom of one of these branches, because I know that this variety or this particular tree is so much healthier than it is in these other ones here that are in pots, that this is going to be where my success is gonna be with this particular variety of getting it to the right state to give me less headaches down the road. I talk about rejuvenation pruning all the time with you guys and the real key to that is we're not trying to fight the virus over time. We're not trying to keep feeding it and make the tree a bit healthier to eventually kind of shake that virus we are rejuvenation pruning the trees year after year, keep cutting them back to six to 12 inches or even cutting them back to almost nothing or just let them get killed by the cold. And they're gonna re-sprout from that base really, really healthy with almost no signs of that virus, which is exactly what has happened this year. So now that my tree is again, very well established or not really well established, it's still young, but now that it's really healthy, I'm able to then have myself a potted tree if I want, this air layer down here, and I can now have myself a really healthy potted tree that I can evaluate and grow and not have these weird growing pains of, of multiple years of trying to have a, a variety that's gonna, perf or a tree that's gonna perform the way it should. Because now the virus is almost gone. It's 
now expressing the, two, the true genetics of what this variety says it should be. So that's, that's my point, is that no matter what the variety is, not just the Shia Black, but whether it's you know, the Dalosa right here, or Smith right here, or Nero 600M right there, or this new variety here I have called Mala Vermella, or this one you know, that's called Ungiarolo, whatever the, whatever the variety is, we need to make them healthy first and foremost, because if they're not healthy, they're not gonna show the characteristics that we need to see when we're evaluating these varieties. We're then, a, if we're not gonna make them healthy, we're evaluating a tree based on a disease, based on a virus. So if the tree permanently has this virus and we make all these assumptions about it, that's not really what truly the genetics are saying is true about the variety that goes into these fruits that if this virus is in a sense, really, it really is hampering different parts of the genetics that we are then observing incorrectly. So now we have a healthy, healthy tree. We can appropriately evaluate all the different characteristics of this variety. And we can just go forward from here. It's really that simple. And I'll just show you a close up of this. Here's the leaves. And I mean, look at that. It looks pristine. It looks just as nice as this, this Smith leaf here. I mean, yeah, there's some rust on that. Um, and even down here, you can see there's a little bit of the virus on this outer edge here of the leaf, or maybe even this leaf down here. But it's got fruits on it. It's extremely healthy compared to what it was. Here's another branch with some nice fruits on it. They may even ripen before the season. I'm, I'm not sure. I may get one right before the end. And then, of course, there's my air layer. So what my, the point I'm trying to get at here is I don't want to sell, when I sell this variety this winter, I'm not going to sell the cuttings to you guys from those potted trees that we looked at. I don't want to give you guys stock cuttings, scion wood, from unhealthy trees, from trees that are displaying the virus a bit more than really they should. And I don't want to have to have you guys fight through this fig mosaic virus symptoms for years for it to eventually then to shake it. I mean, this tree here, like grafted on the Black Beauty 10, as we said, is in a decent state currently. You know, it's not the most productive thing, but um, I'm going to have to fight it, fight with it for another year or two, maybe, and maybe even always, it will always give me some sort of trouble with production. Like instead of the tree producing a hundred figs, it'll produce only 40, you know, I mean, that's not even that much of an exaggeration, I think, because if you look at how many leaves this tree actually put out this year and you count the number of fruits or 30% of the leaves shows a fruit. So that means I could have, instead of, you know, 30%, let's say I had 10 figs per branch, I only have three figs per branch. So there's a 70% reduction in productivity just simply because I don't have a healthy tree. You know, it's really that crazy. It's that simple. Um, this actually, this branch down here is showing about 50% production and this branch is showing zero. So. You know, that's what I'm getting at here, guys. I don't want to sell you guys the bad stuff. I want to make sure that the, the trees themselves are healthy and they're coming from good stock. So we're doing, we're practicing what we preach in terms of rejuvenation pruning. We've seen it time and time again. And, um, you know, I'm also recommending it to you guys. So like you get a tree from me, or let's say you even get some Aishia black cuttings. I would probably root them and then put them in the ground. You know, maybe wouldn't even graft them, although, that's a great recommendation if you have a really healthy rootstock. But if you want to have the, the healthiest, probably the healthiest Aishia black tree possible, do what I'm doing. Put it in the ground. Get yourself a rooted cutting. Maybe even this rooted tree back here that I was saying you guys, you know, telling you guys is on its own roots. This is the one that's been fruiting this year so far. If I took this, planted it in the ground, and then kept continually chopping it back to nothing, in fact, I might do that. Um, I can have myself a whole nother Aishia black tree um, that's inevitably going to be healthy. You know, so if you have, you don't have this variety, then you're trying to find something that's really healthy. And if it's not, put it in the ground, rejuvenation, prune it. If you already have the variety, 
then do what I said, really try to make it healthy by putting it in the ground and rejuvenation pruning it. And over time, it only took me a year. That's only a year later after I planted it. So planted it last year, cut it back last winter, this growing season, it's now healthy. It only takes one or two seasons. If, you, if, it, uh, if it all works out right, you know, sometimes you may have to chop a tree back. Actually, I think it took me two years, guys, excuse me. I think it may have took me two years because sometimes you chop a tree back and it doesn't come back the way you want. So you have to wait till the whole next season to do it again. And maybe even it takes three years, but the variety is so special. It's such a good variety that it's all gonna be worth it at the end of the day for me. I'm going to be looking forward to the day where I have a very healthy Aishia black tree and not many people do. Here's the inside. Dark red fig. A lot of the fruits um, I've been ripening the last couple days have this weird interior to them where they're having like a little bit of brown on the inside. And I don't know what that's about. It's probably just some spoilage from the fruit flies and they're getting in here and really ruining things and it's becoming difficult, as I said, to ripen these fruits. So, um, you know, it's a shame. Uh, fortunately, it seems to be so far just a cosmetic thing, but um, we'll see if this is indeed spoiled in any way. It smells a slightly bit spoiled, so we'll see. Let's try it. Yeah. Yeah, what a shame. Um, let me see if I can get a, a portion of this that, yeah, that upper portion is not fermented just yet. But the upper portion, on, you know, unfortunately isn't as sweet. So here's one that, well, decided to pick this. It's not ripe and you can tell by the, uh, the sap there at the top, but really quickly, I guess, just for the sake of this video. Because again, I don't know if I'm going to get this opportunity again this season. Um, this is a mid-season or so fig, so it's not really too late. Typically, uh, it's got a pretty good shape. I like the way it hangs. Uh, it is a bit more oval shape. I think it'll perform really well on the ground, personally. Given it gets through the winter time, <laughs> with uh, minimal damage and then also um, I don't know how hardy it is but if you wrap it you protect it uh, this will perform really well I think here in this location in the ground so that's actually really good um, I guess as good as an unripe fig can be you know uh, can't tell you too much about it terms of the flavor you know where I rank it I don't know so you know that's where I'm at that's the variety I see a black uh, again I would love to talk about all the different characteristics about it but we just don't we don't really know because we're judging these characteristics on trees that are just not healthy and they're not showing the the truest characteristics that we know so or we should know thank you guys here for watching we'll see you soon hit that subscribe button We'll catch you guys for the next one, all right? Take care.